Hello everyone and welcome to Style Coaching. I'm Kate Matthews and I'm a wardrobe stylist and brand consultant for public figures and I'm also the style coach for Project Wild. This is my seventh year with the program and while this year looks a little bit different than it has in years past, I'm so excited to be here with you today talking about how you can use your wardrobe to help you boost your career as a musician. I'm also really looking forward to meeting you in our one-on-ones so that I can learn more about you as a person and as an artist, but also so we can get into what I can help you with in a way that's tailored specifically to what you need. Because this is a recorded presentation, we won't have the chance for questions afterwards, but you can ask me about wardrobe or branding or anything you think I might be able to help with during our one-on-ones. Now, before we dive in, I'd like to start by sharing a little bit about my perspective on style. I'm not a devil wears Prada fashion monster. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to tell you what to wear or what not to wear. What I am here to do is to help you use your wardrobe as a tool, a tool that has the power to help you get where you want to go in your music career. But before we dig into the wardrobe toolbox, I'd like to share my philosophy on style, plus a little bit about my background, just to give you some context and to make sure that we're all on the same page going into the session. We'll also get into some key branding principles, two of them, um, because from my perspective, branding and wardrobe are completely and inextricably linked for musicians. And after all that, and for most of our time together, we'll get into style and wardrobe, and I'll give you a bunch of styling tips that you can apply in your day-to-day -day life as an artist. So the best place to start on this journey is to consider our relationship with our clothing. Because it's on your body, it feels very personal and it's interpreted as very personal. But I'd like to put the kind reminder out there that you are not what you wear, even though sometimes people will assume that you are. Your clothing has nothing to do with your talent, your character, your heart, your IQ, your sense of humor, your inner strength. In reality, none of that has anything to do with the clothes you're wearing. You are so much more than your appearance, even though many of us have been socialized to think otherwise. So, as I hope you'll see through this presentation, there most definitely is power in clothing, but the real power is within you. I just, I think I should just say that twice. The real power is within you. You are not what you wear. One of my other philosophies is that if you look good, you'll feel good. So. I am in the business of looks, but I'm also in the business of feelings. And even though this is a talk where I'm going to share fashion advice, I encourage you to listen to your instincts above all else, above Vogue, above Instagram, above me, and even above what science has to say about the clothes you wear. It's so much more important to pay attention to how your clothes make you feel. And the number one way to feel good in what you're wearing is to honor your inner voice. You want to listen to that voice to sense if you're emotionally comfortable, not just physically comfortable, but emotionally comfortable in what you're wearing. Because again, you'll look good if you feel good. We've all had that moment where we're cringing at our outfit and we just want to hide under the table. So we don't want that. We want to make sure your clothes empower you. So speaking of cringing at an outfit, I do have something to show you here. So. Growing up, I spent a lot of time on my dad and grandma's farm, and oddly enough, this is where my passion for fashion began. I pretty much refused to wear anything other than dresses. If I was learning how to rope a cow or drive the tractor, it didn't matter. I was in a dress, and I, I really did have to get creative to explore my sense of fashion on the farm, and eventually I got bored of playing dress up alone, so I branched into styling my horse, my cat, my brother, my friend Tiffany, basically any human or any animal I could get my hands on. So I do have something else to show you here. So while I was putting the slide, de slide deck together, I came across or I noticed a similarity in some of these images here. And I'm not sure if you can spot the pattern, but I'll give you a hint. Um, this is why I do wardrobe and not hair. So my mom always wanted me to have bangs, but I hated them. They were hot, they got in my eyes. So when I go to my dad's farm in the summer, I would cut them off at the root. I had these scissors I was allowed to use to cut freezies with. And so I take these sticky scissors and just chop my bangs off right at the root. Um, and I did not learn the first time. I did this a few times. I did it three years in a row. Um, I have school pictures to prove it. It's not cool. It does not grow out nicely. Anyways, so years later, 
I grew my bangs out. I went to university and I majored in commerce and specialized in marketing. And after finishing school, I did artist management and publicity and I really enjoyed it. But about five years in, I started to feel like there was something missing in my career. And sadly, around that same time, my dad passed away and that made me really see how short life is. And it made me realize that I didn't want to spend my life working in a job that I didn't absolutely love. So I know all of you here today, you're chasing your dreams. So I think you probably understand what I'm saying here. So I didn't really have the courage to pursue what I truly wanted until my dad passed away. So in the midst of all that, I took a huge chance and I applied for an internship at the largest fashion magazine in the world, which is Elle magazine. Um, and I moved to Toronto when they offered me the job. So I learned so much working at Elle. It was an amazing experience, um, but working strictly in fashion made me miss working in the music industry. So once I finished my job at Elle, I figured I'd combine my experience in fashion and in music and in marketing and work as a freelance stylist and brand consultant for musicians. So outside of music, I've been a fashion editor for a magazine, a creative director for Fashion Week. I also do some consulting work for a music festival and with our very own voice coach, Tamara Beatty. And I also work in television as a stylist and field producer. So basically anything that brings me to a photo set or a video set is my happy place. So that's me. That's what I do. I wanted to share that with you so that you could see that my perspective on style comes from a different background than you might expect. And I hope that knowing where I come from will help you feel comfortable with me, especially in our one-on-one one -on -one sessions. Um, I love what I do. I love working with artists and I'm here to help you. <clears throat> so next I'd like to talk about branding before we get into style because like I said, the two are inextricably linked. There are two main branding principles that tie directly into figuring out your style as an artist, and we're going to explore those right now. So they say don't judge a book by its cover, but in truth, we all do it sometimes. <clears throat> I don't think Sandler actually said this. Uh, I'm pretty sure he didn't, but I thought it was funny, so there it is. Sorry, Adam, if you didn't say this, um, but it's a good point. So according to scientific research, within the first 7 to 30 seconds of meeting you, a person will potentially make 11 decisions about you. And it's a pretty shocking list, and it's intimidating to think that people make these huge decisions about you in less than a minute. They make decisions about you based on what they see and what they hear, how you dress, how you carry yourself, um, how you sound. Everything about you tells a story. For musicians, it's not just how you look or how your music sounds. It's the colors on your website. It's the font on your business card. It's the firmness of your handshake, the pictures on your Instagram. It all tells a story and it all influences the, de the decisions that people make about you. So you can see why they say you only get one chance to make a first impression. It's really hard to change someone's mind about you after they've made their decision. So the trick is to make sure they make the right decisions about you in the first place. And developing your brand and your style will help you do that. So the first part of the branding process starts with figuring out three things. Who you are, what you have to offer, and what makes you unique. And the more you can articulate those three things, the more your brand is going to reflect who you truly are. And ultimately, that's going to make a big difference in whether or not you'll connect with your audience. So the way I approach this is I do everything I can to figure out who you are as an artist and as a person. So I give my clients an extensive questionnaire. I ask about everything from musical influences to how your best friend would describe you. I listen to your music. I watch videos. I read your interviews. I creep your social. It's basically a full-on stalking situation. So from there, I work to figure out what part of you you want to present, um, the part of you that you want to share, how you want to be seen as an artist. Basically, I try to take the essence of you and, and your music and turn that into something that's marketable. So who you are leads the way. I try to take who you are on the inside and use that to guide what becomes the outside. And the outside is officially called a brand guide, and it can look something like this. A brand guide is a document that holds all of the details of your branding. It can have your logo, your fonts, color palette, a list of words that you do and don't want to be associated with, inspirational images, wardrobe guide, and so on. 
So this document is essential in keeping your brand consistent and cohesive. Now these are very simple examples, but brand guides can get very detailed and they should be very detailed. And everyone on your team, everyone who works with you should have a, com a copy of this document. Um, you need to test everything that has your face, your name on it against this document. So you could think of it as a music chart, but for your brand, it's something that keeps everyone playing the right notes. Now, this leads us to two of the most important elements of building a strong brand, and those are authenticity and uniqueness. Now, this really sums up what I mean about authenticity. I love this one. So I think people want to feel connected to the artists that move them. And in my opinion, the only way an artist can truly connect is if what they're putting out there comes from something in here. People respond to authenticity instinctively much more than they do to something that's put on or fake. And the bottom line is your music, your brand, and your style will have much more impact if they come from the real you. The second branding concept that really plays into an artist's image is uniqueness. This is an oldie but a goodie from Oscar Wilde. So I watched the Katy Perry documentary on Netflix a while back and something she said really stuck with me. Um, when she was starting out, she had some label interest and these labels wanted to make her the next Christina Aguilera or the next Britney Spears. But she said, I want to be the first Katy Perry. So I love that. Fan of her or not, I love that. <clears throat> So unique brands are strong brands. They're identifiable. They make people talk. Think of Dolly Parton. There's absolutely no one like Dolly Parton. She's an international treasure and she's unlike anyone else out there. So now let's tie authenticity and uniqueness together. So basically this next part kind of sounds like something out of a Dr. Seuss book, but here it is. If you're being authentic, uniqueness will follow because you're the only you. And if you're true to that, you're automatically going to stand out. So expressing who you truly are is the best branding tool you've got. And the same goes when it comes to the way you dress. Speaking of the way you dress, it is time to talk style. So we're going to talk about how you can use your personal style to support and communicate who you are, how you want to feel, what you want to do, and what you want to say to the world. Now, that may sound like a lot to expect from pieces of fabric hanging in your closet, but in my work, I have witnessed the absolutely transformative power of clothing, and it's a beautiful thing, and I've felt it myself, and I've seen it in the eyes of my clients. So... My observations here are personal and they're anecdotal, but scientists have also observed the transformative power of clothing. According to scientific research, clothing has an influence on both the wearer and the witness. It influences everything from your behavior, your test scores, your self-perception, the way others perceive you, and so many other things. But how? How does something that is literally superficial affect you so profoundly? While science doesn't always offer an explanation, it does offer some interesting and unexpected, speaking of unexpected, this is an unexpected visit from my cat, Charlie. I'm surprised he's taken this long to make an appearance. Anyways, so science does offer some interesting and unexpected observations that you can use in your quest to harness the power of what you wear. Bye for now, Charlie. So there's a great deal of information on the different ways clothing can affect you. Some of it is empowering and honestly, some of it is frustrating, um, but I hope that as society evolves and as stereotypes uh, dissolve, so will some of these scientific findings. But for now, here's what the evidence has to say. So here are just a few rapid fire facts to show you just how powerful clothing can be. So research in color psychology shows that professional sports teams wearing black uniforms are more aggressive than teams wearing other colors. When women dress in a masculine fashion during a job interview, they're more likely to be hired. Wearing large hoods and capes makes people more likely to administer electric shocks to others. However, wearing a nurse's uniform makes people less likely to administer these shocks. One study showed that people who exercised while wearing red could lift heavier weights than those wearing blue. But here's the twist. Those in red reported the same feelings of exertion as those wearing blue. So the people in red were working harder, but they didn't feel like they were working harder. Research has found that while wearing a bikini 
Women report increased feelings of shame, they eat less, and they perform worse at math. Just the act of a bikini can do all that. So it's pretty powerful stuff, and there's a lot more where that came from, but what I've done is I've sifted through and picked some of the principles that I think will be useful specifically for musicians that you can apply to your own artist wardrobe. So I just need a moment to get the cat hair um, from my darling visitor off my lip gloss. <laughs> okay, I think that should do it. Boy, I wish I could pause this recording, but I can't. So here we go. So <clears throat> it's very important to realize that you're saying something with the clothes you wear. So you want to make sure that what you're wearing says what you mean. Think of your style as an extension of your personal brand, and if you remember what I was saying about people making decisions about you, well, you can use what you're wearing to influence those decisions. So your wardrobe can say so much about you and your brand, it's a powerful tool, and you don't want to waste its power or send the wrong message with it. And I'm always, I'm always very conscious of what message an outfit is sending. Um, it can be subtle or it can be in your face, but people do pick up on it either way. So you could think of Alice Cooper or Core Blend. You've basically got an idea of what they're going to sound like before you've heard a single note. And that is the power of styling and branding working in unison. Oh, we've got a visitor again. <laughs> He's just having a little stretch. So, <laughs> excuse me, Charlie. Say hi, Charlie. <laughs> So for some artists, their appearance is a very big part of their brand, and they put a lot of effort into it. So you could think of Beyonce or Madonna, um, but for others, it's not such a focus. But even for artists who aren't or weren't as calculated with their look, like Lennon or Patti Smith or Johnny Cash, their personal style still made a statement, and it's still a valuable part of their brand. Some artists change a lot over the years, whereas some vary upon the same basic look. So Keith and Debbie have maintained the same style for literally decades. They developed their look early on and they stuck with it. Then you take Madonna, who's constantly evolving, but the fact that she's always changing is her signature. So you know that with every album, um, she's gonna reinvent her image, but it will always complement the music and her overall artist brand, and there's always continuity from look to look. So no matter how you approach this, the key is to find harmony between your personal identity, your visual identity, and your sonic identity. So that for me is always the number one goal, is finding harmony between those three things. So just remember, what you wear sends a message, and you can use that to your advantage. So there are many ways you can use your wardrobe to your advantage, and we're going to spend the rest of our time together going over some of the non-theoretical, real-life, hands-on ways you can do this. So let's start with dressing like a star. So when you look like a big deal, people tend to treat you like one. There's a bunch of evidence behind that. It even affects how um, the type of customer service you get. How you dress depends, will influence the type of service that you get in the store. So you've all got a lot going for you in the style department, but you may feel like you want to push it a bit more, or some of you might feel like you want to push it a lot more. It just depends what you're comfortable with. And I just want to really underline that word, comfortable. You always want to make sure you're emotionally comfortable in what you're wearing because it will affect your mood, your performance, everything. So just to differentiate between emotional and physical comfort, if something is mildly uncomfortable physically, like tight leather pants or high stilettos, but you feel amazing in them and you can perform in them, I say wear them. However, if you feel like you don't want people to see what you're wearing or see you in what you're wearing um, because it doesn't feel like you, definitely don't wear it and don't let anyone pressure you into wearing it either. The goal is to find that balance between taking risks and being 100% comfortable in what you're wearing. Good example of this is Rihanna. So look at her before she got big and look at her now. Like, could you ignore her walking down the street? Probably not. And it's not just her wardrobe, it's her confidence and her commanding presence. And part of her confidence comes from being comfortable in what she's wearing. This is one of my favorite fashion icons. This is Iris Apfel, and I'm gonna give you a closer look at this one. So I encourage you all to aim for originality in your style. In fashion, you hear that originality plus risk equals genius. 
but as you can imagine, sometimes it can equal disaster. The important thing is to keep experimenting, and if you commit a faux pas, if that's really such a thing, you just learn and you move on. I would say that style and music are maybe the same in this respect, and that you must experiment in order to grow. So next up is cohesion, and this is something that many groups struggle with, even high-level acts. So cohesion is a very important branding principle, and it's a simple idea that also translates to the way your group dresses. In terms of branding, cohesion just means that all of your branded elements, so your website, merch, signage, logo, etc., all look good together, like a cohesive unit, where they share elements of similarity, same feel, same vibe. In terms of style, it means that you want everyone to look like they're part of the same group, like you visually make sense together. So for solo artists, you can apply this concept to your backing band. It's basically just a matter of thinking about how your group looks together. Do you look like you fit together? Does the way you look as a group match your music? These are all things to think about. And these are also things to think about not only when you're on stage together, but anytime you're in public together or in a situation where you could be photographed together, you should always look like a unit. That said, you still need to maintain your individuality within the group, but it's the art of finding unifying elements to tie your band together without looking like this. I'm not saying you need to take it this far, but if that's something you want to do, you'll probably make millions of dollars doing it. I'm throwing no shade on this, by the way. I, there's a special place in my heart for this level of commitment to matching. So I have a slight digression here, actually. Um, I'm not the kind of person that finds humor in making fun of people, but one of my favorite websites is awkwardfamilyphotos.com, and it's where people post pictures of themselves with their families and they poke fun of themselves. So you're laughing with them and not at them. And because we're on the subject of matching, here are some of my favorite outfits from awkwardfamilyphotos.com. I'm just going to make this big and I'm going I'm to leave it here for a few moments. Here we go. Those are some of my faves. I absolutely love them. I'm not sure what's my favorite. I think it might be the windbreaker twins situation. Um, that commitment to matching again is something I truly admire. But I also really like the drama in the dogs um, approaching the jugular of that poor innocent child. Uh, anyways, let's get back to business here. Let's get back to uh, cohesion and unifying elements. So as I said, you need to find ways to visually unify the members of your band. And I'm going to go through a few ways you can do this. So these are things you can do with the clothes you already own. And very likely, you'll be able to apply some of these things in time for your showcases that are coming up. So the easiest way to look like a group is to establish a color palette. And I usually say three to six colors. And that applies to the major pieces you're wearing. So your shirt, your pants, your tie, etc. So everyone dresses within that color scheme. And I'm not saying you have to stick to it down to every last piece, but if everyone adheres to the general palette, it will do so much to pull your look together as a group. Honestly, this is probably the easiest way to look great as a group. And if you remember only one thing from this presentation, I hope it's this. And also, don't cut your own bangs. So, this is also a good time to discuss patterns. In the same way you don't want too many colors on stage, you also don't want too many patterns. Um, they have a tendency to clash, so a nice rule of thumb is to limit strong patterns to two within the group at a time. Um, you basically, you don't want someone in paisley and that next person in floral and the next in plaid and someone in houndstooth. Um, there's definitely an art to pattern mixing and I could go on about it, but if um, patterns are something that you and your group tend to wear a lot of, we can talk about that in our one-on-one -on -one session together and I can give you some tips on how to manage that. Another thing to think about is level of formality, and what I mean by that is you want to dress like you're all going to the same event. It's basically the difference between dressing for the beach and the red carpet. So you don't want one person in shorts and a tank top and the other person in a blazer and a dress shirt. It just looks very jarring when the band is all over the place. So just try to keep everyone on the same level of formality. Another easy way to add cohesion is to reference the same style. So, for example, you could all pull from bohemian or avant-garde or a traditional country or an era like the 50s um, or the 80s. <clears throat> I'm not suggesting you rock head-to-toe 80s gear, but if your music genuinely makes sense with that look, why not try an accessory from that era? 
So I would say this is best done when it's subtle, like when you use a song as a reference, you're not copying it, but you're looking to it for inspiration. Dressing in the same season is another way to add cohesion. So I find bands always look better together when they're dressed for the same temperature, like you're all under the same weather conditions. It can look odd when the singer's in cutoffs and a tank top, and meanwhile her backing band is like in long sleeves and jeans, and she basically looks like she's dressed to play a summer music festival, and they look like they're dressed to play a winter formal. So it's one of those things that you may not be conscious of, um, so as much as it's a simple concept, it really does help you look better as a group. So next up is consistency. And what, what I mean by that is looking on brand all the time. So consistency is crucial to maintaining your image and your brand integrity. And in my opinion, you should dress for Madison Square Garden every time you go on stage. You're being photographed at every gig and you never know who's in the audience and those photos last forever online. So. Even in your tour shots and your Instagram feed, you should be thinking about how you dress. You could obviously take it down a notch when you're on your tour bus, but there should still be some hint at your onstage style, even when you're off stage. You don't want to violate the style that you've built up as a performer, right? So ideally, you're dressing on brand every time you're in public and any time you're going to be in front of a camera. So speaking of dressing for the camera, this is one of my favorite topics and it's what we're going to talk about for the rest of our session today. So everything we've gone over so far is going to help you look good on camera, but I've got a few more tips that I'd like to share with you. So first up is outfit order. I'm always conscious of who stands beside who in photos and also on stage. I try to separate similar outfits. So for example, if possible, don't put a vest beside a vest or a leather jacket beside a leather jacket or red beside red and so on. It just looks a lot more balanced when you separate those similar elements. Um, I know you can't always do this, but it's something to think about when you're doing group photos or even when you're on stage. You basically don't want your three front people all wearing denim shirts, right? Unless that's what you're going for, in which case, have at her. So another tip for photos, and especially for videos and for television, is to limit the following. So the first thing is logos. They can cause legal issues, they can deter the press from featuring your photos, and honestly, they can distract from your own brand. The second thing to watch out for is to stay away from really small patterns, like really thin stripes, um, really tiny polka dots, as those almost always distract on camera. And that brings me to another hot tip. Um, always take a video and a photo of yourself in every outfit you're planning to wear um, on stage because this will basically flag anything that's not translating properly on camera. Plus, it has the added benefit of basically recording all of the outfits that you have. So you've got a catalog to choose from when you go to pack for, for um, tour or a set of shows or something like that. So next up is outfit babysitter, aka a wardrobe stylist. So when you're working um, on set with a photo with a wardrobe stylist, um, that stylist is going to prep all of your clothes, steam everything, iron, tape, all of that, and they'll likely be on set with you all day to make sure that your clothing is looking good. So when I'm on set, um, I babysit your outfits. So I watch for stuff like necklaces moving or push sleeves falling down. I also look for continuity from shot to shot, which is especially important in videos, as you guys know. Um, sometimes I'll even watch hair and makeup if the beauty team has had to leave. So I basically keep my eye on everything on your person. So my tip is, if you're not working with a stylist, see if you can find someone to watch for these things. Um, the photographer has their own thing going on, so it's just nice to have someone paying attention specifically to your wardrobe. And um, paying attention to details like this will make your photos look a lot more pro. So. Is anyone thinking how in the, <clears throat> are we going to put all of this together? So it's a lot, um, but in our one-on-ones, we can work on all of this together. Anything that you want to talk about, anything that you need help with, the one-on-ones are designed um, for me to be able to help you guys with the specific things that you and your group need help with. So um, on that note, I also want to say, if you guys have questions or you want to run an outfit past me or something throughout your process with Project Wild, you're more than welcome to contact me. You guys have my contact information in your artist package. Um, you can DM me on Instagram. Whatever way is easiest for you to get a hold of me, I'm here to help you through this whole process. So um, that's a wrap on style coaching for today. I hope you learned something, and I hope you enjoyed it. And I can't wait to see you guys in our one-on-ones.